so here I am. I want to talk about this book today because I got a request. As you were touching on voices, can you please do a video on Mel Bay's complete book of harmony, theory and voicing? I've looked at the first two pages, but already struggling with the drop voices too, as he's saying not to play a flat nine in the third inversion. Can you please shed any light on this? Thank you Lee Cooper for asking this question because I really love that book and I have been, I bought it like, I don't know, five years ago and then I really was crazy about it and then I stopped using it because it's, it is crazy, right? But I think, um, let's have a look at the first chapter today and that's so much material and I think also then it will be easier to understand the rest of the book. So. So basically, if you want to work with that book, it's a good idea if you have your drop two voicings down. So the first page is about drop two voicings, the basic stuff. I'm going to show you them to you in a second. So this book is like a catalog of drop two voicings. And there's two things he's doing, I think. So one thing is he's tweaking drop two voicings, like the more common drop two voicings by one note and finding a new voicing like this. And the other thing is that he's using a voicing on different roots, like superimposing a chord. And that leads to so many possibilities and so many great sounds. I also think it's a great tool for composition because you can just sort of find some sounds and try to write a song from there. I highly, highly recommend that you get your looper out because all those voicings are meant to be played over a root and for you to hear that root, it's a really good idea to record the roots on your looper and then play the voicings because then only then you're going really to hear this the sound that is going to is ring out with the root and it's cool, I can promise that. Yeah, I think most of you, what's a drop two voicing? I want to explain it very shortly. I think a lot of you know it, right? If you have like a C major. So that's a close position voicing like uh, chord, every, every note is stacked up in thirds, right? And if you would try to play inversions like this, that's really tough and you're going to end up with like impossible stretches. So if we drop the second voice, the second highest voice below, and then also play this note on the B string, we have a drop two voicing, right? So that's basically what it is. And then of course you can play inversions of this chord. So it's a C major seven chord, right? And I really like to play the voicing all over the fretboard. as low as possible because it gives you really great uh, chords with open strings and those are always very cool. So that's what he's doing here. So he says this is the first inversion, no sorry this is the root, first inversion right with the E in the bass, second inversion and third inversion. And I think if you want to practice drop two, you start by playing major seven, dominant seven, minor seven, half diminished. So that's just where you start and play it in different keys all over the fretboard. And yes. So. <laughs> At this point, it should be mentioned that a flat ninth interval is generally considered an avoid interval in traditional jazz pop harmony. So if you're looking at this voicing, for example, between the B and the C, that's a flat nine, right? And I love this sound. 
side, maybe you know also this voicing or this voicing. So these sound, these voicings sound much more modern because of the use of this sort of not very stable interval in the chord. And since it's not so stable, it also can obscure, obscure the character of the chord. And I think first of all, we want to play voicings that are very clear to us. And so maybe not to play a voicing like this in a traditional context, I don't know. So, but anyways, he's still using this kind of inversion in the beginning of the book. And then thus, so I understand it like this, right? That that this flat nine interval is not so great maybe, but what he is actually talking about is in the third inversion, you're having a B here and a C here. And that's sort of a flat nine as well, I guess. And I think he just wants to say to avoid using this chord a little bit because it's an inversion of a C major. But if you really listen to it, I don't know if it sounds very major, right? Even with a root, let's record a root. maybe just say just be aware of those of that fact that it sounds maybe a little bit harsher or more modern but then use it with good taste just like you know to hear that it's a little bit different maybe he will not use this voicing I think and also not the inversions of uh, not the other types of uh, chords like you know C major 7 C major 7 flat 5 C major 7 sharp 5 and C minor major 7. So basically any chord that has a major 7 in the root. So then we have this box here on page 9. Construct all four inversions for each four part chord listed. All of those chords can be perceived as altered major 7 chords. So it's not an altered sound, it just means there's one note that is changing, so it's altered, it's different, right? So first of all, the C major 7 chord, we already had a look at it. Then the C major 7 flat 5 chord. So just the 5 goes to the flat 5 in every voicing. And I would assume it's a good idea to just practice this voicing even so he maybe doesn't like it, just to know it as well, right? And then C major 7 sharp 5 is just a raised 5. And then C minor, C minor flat 5, right, just lower the 5 by half note. And C minor sharp 5, I could also say maybe C minor 7 flat 13 is just like raise the 5 in each voicing. C minor 6 chord, which is of course an A half diminished, an inversion, right? C6, which is an inversion of A minor 7. And just going to play a root. Then C6, C7. with a sharp 5, the same thing. C7 with a flat 5. 
sus four and there are different ways of playing a sus four chord with a drop two voicing but you have in brackets one four five flat seven right there are always those numbers in brackets behind the chord symbol so that you would know how this chord is going to be constructed so it's a one the root then the four and the five and the flat seven so if I'm having this chord I know the 1 stays, the 5 stays and the flat 7 stays and the 3rd is going to the 4 because I don't have a 3rd anymore. So I'm just going to play C7 and raise the th 3 by a half step. chord so I have a root a flat third a flat five and a double flat seven a six right so this one I can just shift like always and then I have a C diminished with a major seven chord <laughs> don't get me started on the diminished chord but you know the diminished chords have options as well like the major seven so we can have a one we have a flat five we have a minor third and then a flat, yeah, sorry, and then a major seven. So we can basically play our diminished chord and then change the six into a major seven chord, a major seven interval. So um, diminished, where's the six here? Changed into a major seven. Already very cool sound. Um, where's the six here? Always looking for the six in the diminished chord. And then we have the C minor major 7 chord, which is basically a C minor chord with a flat 7 going to a major 7. So I always like to sometimes just play the chord I know very well and then tweak the one note. Yes. So we have a lot of different chord types, like how many are there? 15 chords already that are just like tweaked types of a four part harmony chord. Follow those, these three approaches in preparing the inversions of the four part chords. Prepare all 15 listed chords on the root inversion only in the key of D, right? So I'm not going to do all the chords. And so on, that would be the root D. Next, prepare chords on the first inversion only in the key of C. Next, prepare chords on the second inversion in the key of B flat and then in the key of G. So if you would be doing this, uh, maybe let's do that with a C major chord and uh, with a major 7 chord that's how, uh, you get a cool chord progression so D major next first inversion in the key of C next second inversion in the key of B flat and then third inversion in the key of G so it would be something like this D major, C major. One more time. So it's just like a nice idea to combine chords like this, I guess. Then second exercise in the key of F, prepare all four inversions on one chord. 
type. Then move to the next chord type. So right, so you would say F major. I always like to start as low as possible. So F major, all the inversions. Sorry. So this is one chord type and then the next chord type is major seven. Uh, flat 5, so I would play again all the F major 7 flat 5 chords. Sorry. Uh. And so on, right? Just as an exercise too. I guess to learn the chords in different inversions and the last one is with an established tempo metronome I guess prepare the following symmetrical chord progression using one chord type for all four chords and inversions continue through the entire list of the 15 chord types okay so C major in first inversion so that would be Root, this would be first inversion, right? Then second inversion of A major would be this one and this one. So third inversion, G flat, root, E flat. And I think he's always a little bit listening to the top note, right? Because that's an enclosure of the G, right? And then, so then let's have a established tempo. One, two, three, four. Sorry, one more time. try to do that with another chord maybe with a C minor major chord so oh god first inversion would be this one right first inversion C minor major then second inversion A minor major oh uh, third inversion G flat minor major god and root, root position so I'm going to record a root already on my looper. Um. <laughs> Sorry. I just realized right at C, A, G flat, E flat. So it's a, th a circle of minor thirds, right? Coltrane changes if you want to. Okay, so I guess on page nine, that's just really like, you know, he's giving you tips how you can get those chords into your system because you're going to need that for the exercise on the next page. So in page 10, in contemporary music, upper structure triads and fourth voicings play a major role. The following chordal inversions contain such voicings and should be noted. So for fourth, like the root inversion of major seven, five, right? And the second inversion of the dominant seven sus four. So those two kind of shapes are the most common voicings for fourth chords. I guess you, you know that maybe. And then here's some examples of seeing triads in those shapes. So, oops, if you have the C major seven sharp five, this is an E triad with a C in the bass. So it could be also written down like this, right? And then we have C minor 7 sharp 5 of let's 13, right? So 
Uh, in this inversion, right? It's like an A flat chord over a B flat. So this is another way to understand that chord and also for the diminished chord with a major 7 you could think about it as a B major chord with a C in the bass. Yes, and the examples using drop 2 voicings throughout this text will indicate such voicings by notating only the top note a voice on the second string, right? So that means if you're having an E here, like written down in the notation, and then he writes C7, like in this example here, you only have one way of playing this chord because he suggests you're playing a drop two voicing on the middle four string, when the top note is the E, and which one could that be? It could only be this one. So that's the way how he's sort of Avoiding to write down a lot of notes, just giving you the top note that's always on the B string. And then you just have to ask yourself, this note <laughs> and this voicing, which inversion is it, right? So, so the following chord progressions examples consist of only 7th and 6th drop 2 type chords. These drop two chord progressions are actually substitutions, right, for more basic chord progression listed directly below, right? So this is the chord progression. Can you read that? This is the chord progression, and those are the this is the drop two chord you're supposed to play, and this is the chord progression that's going to ring out. So let's have the first chord. So we have a G, right? So, and D7 sus4. So we not, now need to find a D7 sus4 inversion with a G on the B string. There's only one. And then the root is the B flat. And if we would analyze that chord, and we're not going to analyze all those chords, <laughs> but if we would analyze it, we would have like a three, six, nine. Is it true? Uh, sorry, three major seven nine six chord. Which already sounds so cool. So I think I would have never been thinking that a seven sus four chord could be a major seven six nine chord. <laughs> so there's really much to explore. So I'm going to play all those examples for you. On page 11, I'm going to play example number one. And first of all, going to record the roots. Two, three, four. possibilities of using one chord right so maybe let's have a look at one other possibility he's having this like parallel motion here right like in bar uh, 4 D major flat 5 on the B flat so that would be like a B flat 7 sharp 9 flat 13 chord shifting the same voicing up to the E flat just using it as an Lydian sound on the E flat and the same voicing for an E flat minus 6 and then one more time the same voicing on a D like you know that's like a half diminished chord with a flat 5 a root like a 
11 and a 7. And I think the best way to work with it is just like to pick one sound that appeals to you the most and then try to get that chord into your progressions like, sorry, I'm, <laughs> this is going to be an endless video, but for example, the first chord, right? I like that. Uh, the G7 sus 4 with the B flat. So maybe I would just like think about a chord progression, like a 2-5-1, I don't know. Where I land on this chord, just to, you know, have an application for it. So... you have to hear it with a different root. It's like a new chord. It's the same shape, but it's a new chord. Okay, next one, page 11, example number two. word about the progression right the first four bars we are in a minor it's like two five to a minor and then we're going to c major so very basic stuff that, that i'm sure you can use on some standard tunes i'm explaining one more time so the first chord is d major so i'm going to play a d major drop drop two voicing and there's that f sharp so i'm looking for an f sharp on the b string right because that note's always on the b string and then I already know it can only be this chord and the B minor, the B in the bass turns it into a B minor 7 9, right? I always think about like sort of mechanics and here the mechanics are so cool you know what I mean it's like where, where, where was it I have been playing the a7 sus4 right with the G so that's bar one two three four five six a7 sus4 on the C which, which is technically a C69 going to a B7 flat 5 with the F and then going to D minor major with a B to E7 augmented. And so just let's forget about the root and just look what's happening. So that's what I mean with like mechanics, right? Like th those voices, they move so cool. That's a dream. Yeah, have fun exploring those sounds. Don't drive yourself crazy. You don't have to work through the whole book. I think it's a book you can come back to again and again and just take one little thing and try to put it into the chord progressions that you're already playing and yes, it's also like a really good technical exercise to play those chords over and over again. Yes, let me know uh, what's your favorite chord progression or which 
with which chapter of the book are you working? How are you working with this book? But maybe everybody can write down in the comment sections below that we can exchange ourselves a little bit on that book. I think that would be great. So have a nice week and I see you around. Bye.